Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Amari. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, great to see you here, Honourable Premier and members of the Cabinet. Um, and thank you very much, everybody, for welcoming me. I'm really excited to be here because, as some of you will know, um, having had a long career in the Foreign Office and Diplomacy, actually an awful lot of my working life there was related to supporting trade and investment. And I kind of uh, look back on some of those experiences. I remember very early on in my career, sitting in a tiny office of somebody in uh, Toyota in Tokyo, trying to sell British car parts, and actually being quite surprised at how good the UK technology was and how much it was wanted. And also, you know, standing in the desert in Rajasthan, and one of the biggest oil refinery projects promoted by the UK, and just realizing for the local people how it was by far the biggest employer and the jobs that were offered by such a commercial enterprise were absolutely crucial to that whole region uh, near Delhi. Um, and then also, more recently in Norway, you know, sitting in the office of a, a tech company right up in the high north in the Arctic Circle, dark as hell, um, wondering why on earth they'd set up a tech company all the way up there. But seeing how the innovation and the agility of companies like that could make a really good go of um, you know, selling tech from the Arctic, because at the end of the day, you can you know, sell tech from most places, and you know, especially Cayman, it strikes me. So, you know, I, I, I'm always very aware, and I've always been so aware during my career, that anything we try to do as governments or as countries, the private sector, you guys, the people who are the members of the Chamber of Commerce, for all these different reasons, are going to be the people who actually very often help us deliver it. And we cannot achieve anything without the private sector, which is partly why when we had this huge UN climate conference recently in the United Arab Emirates, it was the first time really that all of the private sector, the big oil companies, everybody had been invited along, very importantly, the financial industry, because it is recognized, I think, in every area of business that we look at around the world, you are not going to achieve anything without the private sector. So it has to be a partnership, doesn't it? And one of the great examples of that, obviously, here, and I'm sure it will be talked about a lot today, is what we have achieved with the FATF coming off the grey list, um, as I'm sure Deputy Premier will talk about a bit later on. We all know it was a partnership. It was achieved because we were all working together. Um, so congratulations for doing that. I think it does put Cayman in a really uh, strong position going forward, um, and it shows what we can do if we work together. Just a couple of things um, I also wanted to share with you. Because it's January, I was looking the other day at some of the um, papers that have been coming out of the British Foreign Office uh, looking forward into 2024. And it's interesting to sort of see some of the themes that they are identifying. So obviously the world is be becoming a much more volatile and unpredictable place. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Um, the economy and trade is being used much more as a weapon as well as an opportunity. And I don't think that theme is going to uh, abate, really, in the coming years. Um, Agility, which we all talk about constantly in business, is just becoming more and more important, isn't it? Because it's how you handle this unpredictability. And I think it also means that competitiveness, competition, is becoming, in a way, a much bigger and a much more loaded word, because it's not just talking about anymore, is it, how you're competing with you know, companies in the same sector. 
You know, it's about how is the US or Europe competing with China? How are we all competing? What does that competition mean for all of us? So um, in that context, I'm really pleased as governor to see that our relationship between Cayman and the UK is very strong. I continue to believe that it is a good thing for Cayman that we have this special relationship with the UK, still as the sixth largest economy in the world, one of the five members of the UN Security Council permanent members, um, a real leading light, whether it's in the OECD, the G7, the G20, the WHO, you know, wherever you look, um, I think it's helpful to us that we have that link um, with what remains a fair amount of influence in the world, uh, even though in the UK we're absolutely, you know, recognising that this can only be delivered if we're working with a whole bunch of, of partners, some of whom are easier to work with, with than others, but, you know, we have to continue to work together in partnership. Um, so, um, I talked quite a bit to Honourable Premier about how we go forward with the relationship. As you may have seen in the press, we're planning on uh, developing what we're calling bilateral compacts, compact agreements, um, with all of our overseas territories, and we will be looking to do that probably in the next couple of years with Cayman, there's no rush, but it will be an opportunity also in the field of the economy and trade to think about what more can we do to continue to build the relationship and make it fit for the future, make it modern, make it sustainable, if you like. So that's a good thing. So we'll be working together on that. And finally, I just wanted to say two other things, a kind of call to action, if you like. Um, tech and cyber. One of the things that definitely came out of the Foreign Office uh, view of the world going forward was that obviously tech continues to be uh, a real driver, uh, an opportunity and a challenge. And I just wanted to say to all of you, please, when you leave this conference, do go away and think about your vulnerabilities in terms of cyber security. Um, it's not just about fulfilling the regulations, but I think here in Cayman, we could probably do more to have a proactive partnership with the specialist enforcement authorities who can help us to spot problems and prepare for them and to share information on the kind of attacks that are happening so that we can prepare ourselves better. This is something we've done some work on in the UK through the National Cybersecurity Center. We've learned a few things, good and bad, so hopefully we can share some good practice in that area. But I think it's I think it's something we could do more of here in Cayman. And then lastly, I, I can't really leave this podium without talking about security. I know it's very high on everyone's mind. I'm working very closely with police commissioner. And in this area as well, it strikes me that there is quite a proactive role that you as chamber members can continue to play because whenever we discuss this issue, including at the National Security Council, we look at it in the big picture, you know, and it is partly, isn't it, about the the sort of social um, environment, the context, the opportunities that people have. And I know that many of you are already involved in schemes for apprenticeships or internships. Uh, you're working with the NGO sectors and charities. But please do think about what more um, you can do to help us, because when we're trying to tackle the security challenges. We will be trying to do it in a holistic way. So, of course, we're trying to get more police out on the streets. We'd be very, very open to talking to any of you about your local areas where you've got your businesses, if there's specific problems. Um, but we also want to make sure that we're looking at how we can create the opportunities in society so that fewer people um, have to take uh, a bad route, basically. So um, that's it from me. Really pleased to be working with you. And I just wanted to say thank you for everything you all do to make Cayman with us, working with us in government, sort of livable, uh, successful, and indeed, theme of the conference, sustainable. So thank you very much, everybody.